Okay, so it's been a really long time since we uploaded our Fire Tornado trial video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. There's going to be a link around here somewhere. Click the annotation. Uh, a few weeks back, we went for part two, the upscale version, and we had to take it to a quarry. It was just that dangerous. And it was pretty awesome, so here it is. So fire tornadoes, fire whirls, flame nadoes, whatever you want to call them, they almost always start the same way in the wild with a bushfire. Well, I'll get this one started then for you, mate. Cheers, mate. Most bushfires occur in hot, dry grassland areas, a little bit like this replica here, and the most frequent natural cause is lightning. But most are caused by man. As the bushfire starts, it eats up all the fuel and grasses around it. And in places where bushfires are common, plants and animals have actually done what you might not expect. This eucalyptus, for example, has incredibly flammable leaves. And by passing the fire very quickly over it, it means that the heat doesn't spread quite so deeply into the plant itself. But that does mean the fire spreads even faster. And on the animal front, there are little beetles called jewel beetles in Canada. They can actually smell bushfires from about 50 miles away, and they'll fly towards them. And that might seem unusual, but when the fires are dying down like this, the jewel beetles are able to actually mate in their embers. All the competition for resources have been wiped out or chased away, so that gives any offspring a complete head start. But for those of us not designed for fire, bushfires can be a truly terrifying prospect. Add a bit of wind into the mix, and bushfires can travel up to 20 kilometres per hour. That's about as fast as most of us can run. <laughs> So wind plus bushfire equals bad news. But if, for example, our bushfire was on the side of a mountain, any wind moving past that mountain might curl around it and then get lifted up by the heat of the fire and create a vortex. We've got some fans and some fuel behind us, so we're going to try and replicate those air movements now and see if we can create a fire tornado of our own. And it's going to be good. That's definitely getting there. Oh, hello. That looks amazing, Si. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty glad it's trapped in this sort of cage of air. Yeah. Because in the wild, they really are harbingers of doom. I mean, some things do well in bushfires, nothing does well in fire tornadoes. I mean, there was one back in Hamburg in World War II, actually, that was three kilometers wide and five kilometers tall. Well, I think, uh, I think we're quite lucky we could just turn it off. It's contained within this cage of air right here. Absolutely. Well, if you liked what you saw today, don't forget to subscribe to Earth Unplugged. And don't forget these are truly deadly, so don't try this at home.